Okay, so let's have a look at how net install works in great and intricate detail. So we have a Windows PC here running Wireshark. <clears throat> this Windows PC is ready to capture uh, any packet on the network between the router uh, or my PC's MAC address uh, and if my PC is communicating to uh, the broadcast MAC address on port 5000. This is important because uh, without this, you can't see any of the file transfer activities going on. In addition, I've just added onto the end of this uh, some additional filters so that you can see the boot P uh, protocol uh, kick off when the router first boots. I have the router currently run running version 7.3.1. We're talking to it via the serial port. This is an RB4011 router which we will reboot and put into net install mode. So let's go and run a 32-bit version of net install. This is net install version 7.3.0. The reason I'm running this is I want to show you when the application first runs and it asks for firewall access. So here we go. I'm on a private network, so it's asking me if I want to allow this access. You need to say yes. And by doing so, what that does is, whilst the firewall is running, it allows connections to be made to applications hosted on uh, this PC. This PC can always make connections outbound, but to receive a new connection inbound, you need the firewall uh, exemption. So let's show you what that looks like. So here I have uh, the Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security uh, application running. You need to be an admin to access this, if I recall. Uh, but here we have the rules it created when I clicked those options in the request. And what you'll notice is that for a public network, now note I didn't tick the public option, I only ticked private because this network I'm on is marked as private, it's a homeland. It's blocking uh, TCP and UDP, but for or all inbound, that is, but for the private network type, it's allowing inbound TCP and UDP. Now, outbound's not an issue. Outbound is just allowed, right? Unless you have an explicit deny rule, which is rare. So as you can see by clicking that button, when it requested firewall access, this application is now allowed to receive connections. So now let's go and configure net install. Uh, so the only configurable options for the first stage of the net install process are the net booting settings. So this PC I am on has a IP address on my layer two network in my current existing network, right? I'm connected to the switch on my PC and the MicroTik RB4011 is also connected to the same switch on the same VLAN. So my IP address is 192.168.0.72. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into boot server enabled. So by ticking this option, what it's actually doing is creating a TFTP server or trivial file transfer protocol server and a uh, boot P server running on uh, this interface. So boot P is similar to DHCP, so boot P stands for the boot protocol. It's designed specifically for bootstrapping uh, devices and giving them a static IP address. DHCP is dynamic in its very nature, so it's they're very similar protocols, but uh, in this case, boot P is what's going to give the router the IP address I want to give it. And in that case, this IP address is an IP address on my network I know is not used. So I know for a fact that this 192.168.0.220 address is not in use on this layer two network. Now you can use the whole 192.168.88 uh, standard as uh, Microtech recommends that you do. But the point I'm making here is that that's not what's necessary. What's necessary here is that at layer two, the router can boot up, can find your boot P server, can be issued an IP address and can connect to the TFTP server that, that this process is running and download the software. 
So let's OK that. And now let's ask Windows if we actually have a boot P process running. So here we go, I've got the command in my history. And what you'll see here is on 192.168.0.72, it is listening on UDP port 67, which is the boot P protocol. We've also validated that it's listing on the correct interface, the primary interface. The uh, net install uh, TFTP server is bound to the correct interface. Now at this point, there's nothing else I need to do for the first stage of the net install process on the router. This is all fine. I don't need to go and look for the packages yet. At this point, it is just going to allow the router to download the pre-boot environment, the net install boot bootloader effectively. So right now I'm going to power cycle the PoE port on my switch. So this RB4011, as you can see, is uh, powered. There's no, there's no power socket in it. You can see it's powered by uh, PoE. So I'm just going to bounce the, the uh, PoE or power over ethernet um, on that switch port going to the RB4011. And as I do that, I'm going to hold the reset button down on the RB4011 and we're going to wait until it's ready for the uh, net install process. Okay, so here we go, power cycle for three seconds and go. So I'm holding down the reset button and when the power comes back, the power light will come on blue and then there's a, a green light that goes solid and then the green light will start flashing. If you let go of that right now, it'll just do a factory software uh, configuration reset, but don't let go. We wait for the green light to stop flashing and then go out after it's gone solid. It's gone out, here we go. So we're watching uh, trying boot P protocol. Okay, it's found it, it's found my MAC address and it's transferring the file. Okay, so I'm doing this again because I stuffed up and didn't have my PCAP running on Wireshark. PCAP means packet capture. Okay, the light is about to go out on the router. Okay, I've let go of the reset button. Try and boot P protocol. So it's looking for my boot P server. It's found it. And now you can see it's transferring the file via TFTP. And you can see the blocks, and you can also see it's transferred, jumping to the kernel code of the file it downloaded. Right, and so now the router will sit here forever. It will stay here for hours and hours and hours. You can just leave it running. And what it will do is it will keep broadcasting uh, on uh, UDP port 5000 and announcing its presence to the network. Now, because it's done that, the, it now appears over here on the left-hand side in the NetInstall application. So NetInstall was listening to broadcasts on UDP 5000. It saw the broadcast, and the broadcast packet is basically the... Uh, router advertising itself. I am an RB4011 um, running ARM64. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually is ARM64. Currently running 7.3 of the net install code. And so that's correct. So what we'll actually, we'll just stop this for a second and scroll to the top and look at the uh, initial uh, request. So let's get rid of the stuff at the bottom. So what you'll see is that the router, which had IP address 192.168.0.220, which I told it to get, uh, made a request to the TFTP server, which is on my host. Now that TFTP server is running inside this process. And it requested a file called VM Linux, or basically a Linux kernel. And that file was then transferred once the transfer completed and it executed that uh, code, let's just scroll to the end of the TFTP file transfer, let's just, it's up, up here. After a few seconds, uh, what happens, of course, is that it runs this code and begins broadcasting on port 5000. So ignore these router solicitations, that's just some stuff to do with um, my PC. Ignore that, it's not really relevant to what's going on here. Uh, so now we're sitting here and we're ready to transfer 
the actual package. So the first thing to do is we have to browse to the uh, list of possible files here. And I don't actually have a decent one there. Let's go and grab 7.3 from Microtik first. I'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. So we've actually got version 7.3 here, um, but basically we're going to pick the router and then browse again. Okay, so now we want to push version 7.3 out to this device. So let's make sure, let's uh, restart our capture here. And what you'll see is you'll, we'll see these constant UDP 5000 broadcasts from the router. And once we click on install, what's going to happen is that the net install process on this PC is going to send one single uh, UDP packet uh, broadcast again. So it's going to come from my IP address to the broadcast address and it's going to uh, let the router know there is a package available. It's an offer packet which goes to the entire layer 2 network and the router has to pick that up. And we can actually see that by running Procmon. So here I've got Proc Procmon or Process Monitor running and you'll see that the net install process which I'm only listening to, I'll just clear that out, is seeing these packets coming in from the router. So the actual executable is accepting that broadcast packet up the network stack and is receiving it and saying, yep, yep, we're all cool here. So now when I click install, what will happen is that the uh, net install process will send that, that offer packet uh, to the actual router itself and the router should begin to start downloading and transferring the actual uh, router OS package. However, this is Windows 11 and so it might fail. So let's quickly delete this again so we have a clear one again and go. And as you can see, we sent the UDP packet, um, but the UDP packet was uh, never sent um, from, this, from this host. So let's stop that and we'll scroll down to the bottom and we'll see that there's no difference here in these length packets. So nothing is exiting the network interface on this device to send to that other host. Okay, so we're back and we're on a Windows 10 virtual host right now. It is on the same uh, virtual network, uh, sorry, the same logical network uh, as my main PC. Let's just go and make the settings the same. Now what you'll notice is that uh, we are seeing all of these, let's get that going again. That router <coughs> that was running before in uh, net install mode is still running. It's been probably 45 minutes while I was setting up this PC and uh, that router, and we'll just drop out of this RDP session, still here waiting for installation server. So it's still going. So what we'll do is we will now repeat this process on this Windows 10 device, which has the same firewall rules and everything as the other one. So let's go and uh, click on the router, uh, browse for the appropriate file. Okay, so we're back again. Uh, this virtual machine is very slow. Um, okay, so I'm going to reset everything here and we're going to uh, restart this and we're going to clear out Procmon, wait to see the packets appearing and then we're going to say yes we want that router, we want version 7.3 and we're going to keep old config and we're going to install. You see the packet got sent and now we're transmitting data. If I drop out of this you'll see that the actual router down here is installing the system. We can jump back and when the file transfer is complete, uh, the router will ask me to reboot. But note what's actually happening here is that between the router itself, which has a 0000 IP address, uh, and my host, both of the communications back and forth, the acknowledgements and the data transfer, are all broadcasts. 
Uh, so let's go back, see it says press enter to reboot. We can also actually do that from within the system here, click reboot. Jump back, you'll see on the uh, serial port monitor, it actually is rebooting. And loading kernel, and what it's gonna do here is load uh, version 7.3 of the MicroTik software. We'll just let that load, and we're up. So let's quickly uh, stop this capture and we'll go to Procmon. Um, we'll, at the very top here, you'll see the very first uh, UDP send, which is the offer to the router uh, of the actual software package. And then we'll scroll to the top of our PCAP. You'll see here that very first packet. So you see these 151 bytes. These are all the broadcasts from the router saying it's, it's uh, ready and willing to be sent a package. Then the offer gets sent um, from my host's IP address to the broadcast address on the network. And this is the data, it's obviously binary. Uh, that binary data is saying, yes, I have a file, the file version is 7.3. And then the router accepts that. And then there's a bit more handshaking going on. And then what we have here is a 1.4 kilobyte um, data packet, which is about the right size for an ethernet network. And it just says send and acknowledge, send and acknowledge, send and acknowledge, and it continues doing so uh, until the file is transferred. But as you can see, the entire process uh, is always sent to the broadcast IP address. It is an ethernet uh, and IP address broadcast for the file transfer mechanism. Um, back briefly, and uh, with the microphone I was actually intending to use for the rest of the recording, uh, which hopefully sounds a lot better, not so echoey, but uh, what I did, by the way, just here is I took that uh, uh, data transfer uh, package that we saw here and followed the conversation um, in uh, Wireshark. And what you can see is what it's effectively doing is reconstructing the binary file that was transmitted. And you can actually see offer packet, there's the offer. Uh, and then in response, we see a bunch of information about the file itself. And you can see, start to see inside the file. Yes, it's the stable version, main package of most of services. If you scroll through this, uh, you could use it to deconstruct um, uh, effectively the you know what's inside these these AP these, these NPK files. But as you can see, that data that's being transmitted there via these broadcasts is indeed um, the uh, router OS NPK package.